This year more than ever, it's time to up your game when it comes to growing food for yourself and your family in your garden. If you want to check out the force multiplier that I just implemented for this year, stick around. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. It's the beginning of April and here in my region up in New England, that means it's time to start seeds indoors. And I wanted to show you my new seed starting rack. This is the most serious that I've ever taken any of this. I've done different things in years past and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I've done in the past that is not at this level, but I wanna share with you what I've got going on for this year. But before I get into that, what I wanna say is that if any of this is beyond you uh, and some of this stuff does cost a little bit of money, uh, if some of this seems daunting to you and you're, you're thinking, you know, I'd love to start seed, but I just don't have that much extra money to throw around. I want to say it right up front. You don't need all this stuff that I got going on right here. If you want to grow seeds and you want to get something going, this is an old yogurt container. I took a little wood burner and I burned a couple of holes in the bottom. That turns it into a functional flower pot. pot. Just get, go down to your uh, garden center, get some potting soil, or if you have some like fluffy dirt near you, you can kind of use that. You want to have kind of a fluffier material for starting seeds. You can kind of take a mix of like regular dirt in your area, mix it with some peat moss, but potting soil is so cheap and inexpensive. Uh, cheap and inexpensive are actually the same thing uh, that, you know, I, I think it's pretty much attainable to anybody. So grab some old, you know, recyclables, put a couple holes in the bottom of them, um, get yourself some, uh, potting soil to throw in there and you don't even have to go out and buy seeds now seeds don't cost that much money but they do cost more than zero and one thing that costs zero that you can use is just seeds out of uh, crops that you you know are buying for food these are a bunch of seeds that I collected from a uh, butternut squash that I grew last year uh, but if you buy a butternut squash at the grocery store you can grab some seeds out of there uh, squash are great because the seeds of them are good when the uh, the crop is ripe. Some uh, crops you want to let uh, get past the point where they're kind of like ripe. Uh, an example of that would be corn. Uh, you know, the seeds on corn, uh, you know, if you buy corn on the cob, the seeds aren't really ripe yet. So you can't like save a corn on the cob and then actually expect to plant it. But if you're buying uh, squash, you know, the seeds you're getting in there are all going to be good. These seeds are from a spaghetti squash. Now this doesn't mean that every single plant that you buy in the grocery store is going to be giving you viable seeds. But if you don't try it all, then you get a 0% chance of success if you, you, know, you don't even give it a, a shot. So if you want to do any of the stuff that I'm talking about in this video, don't get uh, you know, all uh, caught up in the idea about like, oh, you know, I'd love to, but I, you know, I, I need more money in order to do it. Recyclable containers, dirt, preferably potting soil, which really isn't all that expensive. And if you don't want to buy seeds, just grab seeds out of things that you bought at the grocery store. These are squash seeds. Um, you know, what are some other things that you might want to, uh, I just, <laughs> I'm not going to give you a list of seeds. Tomatoes, that's another really great one. In fact, what I would say is my most successful tomato plants, generally speaking, are the tomatoes that I have bought from the grocery store and I've thrown them into the compost and there were some seeds mixed in with them. And the tomato plants that grew out of my compost that I never even intentionally planted, those are generally my most successful tomato plants every single year, not the ones that I go through the trouble of caring for and putting in my garden. So, you know, stuff that you randomly get from the grocery store quite often will have viable seeds. Give it a try. Worst case scenario, it doesn't grow and then you're no worse off than you would have been if you didn't even try. Okay, so let's get into the actual video. Uh, but I just, I wanted to put that out front because I, I know on prepping channels in particular, people are always talking about like, you know, you want to buy this thing, you want to buy that thing. You don't have to buy stuff in order to be prepared. You don't have to buy stuff in order to make your life, uh, you know, better, more functional and uh, more detached from a lot of our society, which we know is not always 100% reliable. There are things you can do to achieve a lot of these things where you don't have to put in the money. But I'm going to be talking about the stuff that I uh, put it, uh, together here, some of the benefits of it why I felt that because I had the ability to, to achieve some of this stuff, I think that it's going to be a little bit better for me. But again, saying it one more time, this is the last time you don't need all this stuff. Just get some containers, some dirt, some seeds, 
put them together, see what happens. Okay, so what do we got going on here? This is a wire rack shelf that I bought specifically for this purpose. It is uh, just about three feet wide. I think it's 36 inches wide, 14 inches deep. Uh, it's something about like 50, uh, 50 inches tall and it's got four shelves on it. What I've done is I have attached to the bottom of two of these shelves, these Mars Hydro lights. Now, these are one of the items that uh, come with a significant uh, cost. I think each one of these lamps was just about $200 and I bought two of them. Uh, the reason that I went with this brand is it has a very good reputation. I'm looking for something that's very energy efficient, so I am not using that much energy to put into my plants. Like, uh, if I am in a situation where I don't have access to that much energy, we run our house mostly here on solar. In fact, the camera is running on solar. This light that's illuminating my face is running on solar. Uh, you know, everything that I'm gonna be turning on here is all running on solar. You know, if we have a series of cloudy days, I may you know, be in a situation where I would feel like I wouldn't be able to run this because you know, maybe we don't have enough energy in the battery. So I wanted to make sure I got something energy efficient and reliable with a good reputation. So I went with Myers Hydro and I got two of them. Each one's 40 inches by I think like 10 inches uh, wide for, e for each of them. It might be a little bit uh, narrower. Um, and I've got uh, two of them mounted to each of the shelves. Now, frequently when people will use these kind of uh, lamps, what they're gonna do is they're gonna have the lamps hanging and they're going to make it so that they can adjust the lamp so we can get closer or farther away from your, your seeds. And this is what I'm using for my seeds here. This is just something I went and I bought at a, you know, a garden center. Uh, these are not very expensive either, but again, like I said, you don't have to buy this. You can just, you know, use little cups or, or whatever, you know, recyclable containers and things like that. Uh, I, I got these because I, they, they only cost a couple of dollars. I've been rocking this one for probably almost a decade or so. I'm careful with it. I mean, it's not the, the highest uh, quality plastic, but uh, as long as you, you know, you treat it well and you don't leave it out in the sun, uh, you know, they been going for almost a decade here for me, so they're doing pretty well. So I, I've got these, and normally what you would do is you would take the lamp and you'd bring the lamp down, uh, you know, really close to the soil, and then as the plants start growing, you're going to raise the lamp up uh, so that, you know, you make room for the, the plants to, uh, to grow, you know, so they're not uh, touching the, uh, the lamp. What I decided to do on this was a little bit differently. Uh, I decided to do it a little differently, which is what I mean to say. Uh, instead of making the lamps go up and down, I decided to make the lamps fixed. I uh, attached the lamps directly to the shelves themselves, and I made this platform, which can hold a couple of these seed starting trays, and the platform is using paracord, uh, which is kind of threaded through it, and the platform goes up and down. Now, why did I choose to do that? Primarily is because I, I felt like the lamps, they're the technology. I don't want the technology banging around. Uh, you know, if I need to move this thing, I don't want uh, to feel like, you know, my lamps kind of, you know, banging side to side and everything. I wanted the lamps fixed in place. And uh, with the seed starting trays, uh, when, I, when I move this, I can move the seed starting trays off. And then, you know, this thing can kind of float around as it, as it feels that it needs to. But I felt like this might be a nicer way to do it. So you're moving the plants up and down uh, underneath the lamps. The other uh, ability that I have is that, let's say I have some plants on one side that want to be, uh, well, they're shorter and they want to be closer to the light. And I have other plants that are next to them that are a little taller and they need to be further from the light. If you're just moving the light, you know, I guess you could maybe make the light crooked or something like that. But uh, the way that I've got it here, uh, I can have some things closer to the light and some things further from the light. Now, having this one platform that goes all the way across that eliminates that as an option. But if I remove the platform and then I just, uh, I kind of like stacked uh, thing, uh, the plants up on top of things. Like if I put little boxes to get some of the plants a little higher and some of the plants to be a little bit lower, it just gives me a lot more options. So I decided to go uh, with that route, moving the plants instead of moving the lights. Now I mentioned I have two of these lamps. I've got one on this shelf and the other one is connected just below it uh, on the shelf below. For this season, I'm only gonna be using uh, the one lamp. Now, why did I buy two? Two is one and one is, uh, and one is none. Uh, and also in the future, that gives me room for expansion. I also decided to buy two right now because with the cost of things uh, you know, growing over time, I advocate here on my channel all the time, it's really important whenever you can take some, uh, take uh, you know, US dollars that you might be holding and invest them in something that you know or reasonably believe that you're going to buy at some point, you're probably gonna be saving yourself money because as the dollar devalues, uh, and I mean, that's just a normal part of our economy. We, we call it inflation that we expect and plan for our dollars to be worth less and less and less and less 
and less and less and less every year. Uh, that's the way the system is built, and sometimes it gets even more extreme than that, but even if it doesn't get any more extreme than that, it's by design that your dollars are worth less and less every year. So I figured why not invest in the two lamps right now. I've got them. I'm sure, you know, five or 10 years from now, if I wanted to buy another lamp, it would be a larger investment than it was for me, uh, you know, to, to have done this year. So that's the reason that I got both of those. I uh, normally, when people are setting these light uh, lamps up, they have uh, ballasts, uh, which are kind of energy converters, and they've got dimmer switches and everything. And those will mount right to the top of these Mars Hydro uh, lamps. I decided to do it a little differently. Uh, I have just the bare bones lamps attached to the shelf here. And I put all of the electronics and ballasts on this piece of wood that I attached to the side. Uh, the ballasts are all on the back side and the dimmers are on this side. And I also have a, uh, if I can open it up, I've got a timer here so that I can make it so that the light will turn on at a certain time of day and then it will turn off uh, you know, at a certain time of day. So this is all the electronics that I have uh, going on here. I am gonna be adding one more device and I wanted to record this video now because I think it's important to get this video out to you guys, but there is one more device I'm gonna be adding to this and that is some uh, thermal pads uh, that will fit underneath each of these seed starting uh, trays. One of the really important things, especially when you were just beginning to germinate your seeds is getting your seeds up to a proper temperature. Uh, the, you know, the light is really important once they start growing, but what's really important is getting that proper temperature in the soil. So what I'm gonna be adding is a couple of pads that'll fit under each of one of these trays. And I'm gonna have those set onto a little bit more electronics devices up here where I'm gonna have a temperature um, uh, sensor that will uh, manage that, uh, that temperature to make sure that they stay at that, that um, you know, optimal temperature, which I forget, it's somewhere around like 70 or 80 degrees or something like that uh, to, get the, to get the things germinating. So that's the only thing I'm gonna be adding to this uh, you know, after the time of this uh, video recording. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention about the timer, uh, and this is something that uh, it took me a little bit of time to kind of think this through and make sure that it made sense in my mind. I mentioned that our house runs on solar power. Uh, and you might think, well, you know, if you're running a house on solar power, you know, running these lamps off of electricity, you know, wouldn't it just make more sun sense to, to bring the plants out into the sun and use the sun when you have the sun? And maybe, you know, you can use some of this electric uh, augmentation to, uh, you know, give them a little bit of extra light later on. Uh, yeah, that, that could make sense. But the reality running uh, the, the solar electric system that we have on our house is that, uh, each morning you wake up and the batteries are a little bit on the low side because you know you were using power through the night. The sun comes up, the sun hits the panels on our roof, and within like an hour or two, the batteries are maxed out. And the majority of the day, from you know a couple hours after uh, sunrise until you know the sun's starting to go down, we've got way more power than we have anything to do with. Uh, you know, for the majority of the day, there's just you know the batteries can't take anymore, and it's just you know it's kind of going to waste. Uh, and then you go into the evening, and you know you start uh, kind of triaging your electricity use as you go into the evening. Whenever we're doing something like washing laundry or uh, doing anything that uses a lot of electricity we always do that stuff during the daytime the nighttime we try to do you know just bare minimum kind of uh, things with elect electricity so that the batteries don't get drained too much through the night and they're ready to get recharged the next morning so the reality is whenever the sun is up for us in a position where it would be appropriate for giving sunlight to these seeds uh, we've got way more energy than we need in the system anyway. So what I've been thinking about initially was kind of moving these seeds back and forth or positioning them in a place where they kind of get some sun and this could be some, uh, some extra light to add to that. But it just became a, a reality to me that you got way more uh, energy than you need. So what I've decided to do is I didn't put this in a sunny part of the house. Uh, we've got the, the solar panels are collecting energy right now. It's not being used. So we have them just sitting here and I'm not going to be chauffeuring them back and forth at all. And I think that makes a lot of sense for my situation because I live in a situation where my energy is free all day long and it's use it or lose it. If you are in a situation where you don't have uh, free solar power all day, you might want to make kind of a different uh, choice where you do bring them out and put them into the sun during the uh, majority of the day and maybe you just add a little uh, uh, augmentation of sun, uh, you know, artificial light at the end of the day. I, you know, I can't comment on what would be best for you, but for me, this just made sense because, you know, of, of what our setup is. So let's see how the whole thing works here. We've got a, a power uh, strip in the back and I've got the two dimmer switches here. This one uh, functions the, uh, the, the top light and you can see this is maximum brightness there. I mean, these guys pump out an awful lot of light. Right here is 50% illumination, 25% illumination, 
and we can go down back to zero. And we've got another uh, switch right here for the lower rack on the on the bottom. And for this season, I don't anticipate that we'll be using that one at all because we're going to be having all of our our plants up on the top here. So this is what we've got going on for this year. Uh, I'm excited about it because in years past, I have always just uh, put placed my plants out in the sun and I haven't given them any additional daylight. So, you know, they would just get the amount of daylight that you would have, you know, during April and things went all right. But I know that my dad, uh, he has always used grow lights and he, <laughs> He'll grow a bunch of different plants and, uh, you know, usually around this time of year and I, I, I anticipate I'm going to get a call from him in maybe like a month or so. And he's going to say, uh, you know, I've got these, uh, you know, like so many extra tomato plants and so many extra this plant because uh, he always grows more than he needs. And he's going to ask me, well, would you like to have some of these? And I always, he has a very small garden space. So I'm always kind of like, yeah, okay, bring them by. You know, we can always find some place for him. And I always try to find some place for them, but it's embarrassing to me. Uh, no, it shouldn't be embarrassing. It is not embarrassing, but it's it's uh, it's very telling uh, that when he brings his plants, he's usually got them in not not these kind of yogurt containers, but like the big uh, the big kind of yogurt containers. So he's got them transplanted into that, and he's got tomato plants that are like that. You know, that, there's the container, and then they're like that tall. And I've got my little seed starters, and mine are like like that big at the same time. So the only difference between the two of us uh, is that he exposes his to a heck of a lot more light. You know, there might be some other uh, differences as well. Um, there are a lot of variables, I suppose, but that's one of the big ones. So that's one thing. This is a competition between me and my dad. And uh, this year, I, I, I wanna give him a run for his money. So this is, uh, this is my, uh, kind of uh, ace in the hole, I'm hoping, to really give uh, my plants an extra jump on the season. And what's good about that is that if you can, instead of me planting a tomato plant that looks like it's been growing for a couple of weeks or something like that, and I'm planting something that looks like it's been growing for a couple of months, the reason that that's cool is that, uh, you know, throughout the whole season, you're getting fruit early, you get fruit for longer, you know, it's, the whole process just bears more for you. So that's really what I'm looking to achieve is we're going to pack in as much growing here as we can. And then once we move things outside, we're going to have our plants be that much more mature. So we're going to get that much more uh, you know, crops off of them because I know the way it always is in the fall is I get you got a bunch of green tomatoes that just didn't quite make it over the finish line and you got you know a bunch of little squash that like just didn't quite you know have enough uh, summer in order to kind of swell up and actually become something that you could eat. So by doing this I'm hoping that uh, some percentage of all those kind of inedible crops that are just for the chickens or the compost will actually become edible crops that we can use. So let me know your thoughts about this. If you think that I've missed anything here, uh, I'd love to hear, hear your, your, th your thoughts. What are you doing this year? Are you starting early? Are you expanding beyond what you've done in years past? Why are you uh, making that change? I know for myself, I'm trying to challenge myself every year to improve my, go my game in terms of how I approach this, whether it's giving them a better start at the beginning or you know improving their garden space outside, improving the soil quality. Every single year I'm trying to push myself to do a little bit better than I did in years past. It's not really a competition between you and your dad. It's a competition between you and you from last year to see every year if you can get just a little bit better. That's it and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, you're probably gonna enjoy this video that talks about what are actually my most successful garden plants ever. And a little spoiler alert, they're never the ones that I actually intentionally plant.